Well, I hope that you've been having some good discussions about this autopsy of a deceased church. And I just want to give you a recap here on chapter 9. He labels it the church rarely prayed together. Um, and I, I find this a real interesting conversation considering churches that are dying and why we possibly wouldn't have more prayer meetings or have more people come to prayer meetings and actually join in. And so he asked the question of the survivor of those dead churches. This is on the second page. Did the church members pray together? And he says, you see, most of the churches, almost to the day they shut the doors, had some type of prayer meeting. We have a prayer meeting here, Wednesdays from 12 to 12.45. We have maybe anywhere from 6 to 10 people that come uh, faithfully, and we pray for LCM, and we pray for uh, Brooklyn Center, our schools, and uh, we pray for the church as a whole. Down at the very bottom of that page, he says, that was a shame because you never knew what the other people would bring. And that's, of course, he was talking about this meal time that they had. It was about their prayer time. Their prayer time had started in this nice fellowship time where fellowship became more important than the prayer time. And it was more important to know who was bringing what, you know, A through M bring the hot dishes and O through Z you bring the desserts. And again, he says in the next page, again, I ask her to return to the topic of prayer. And she said, well, that's pretty much it. And that's what happens most often to prayer. And yet, we'll be the first ones to say, prayer is a powerful weapon. And, and even God says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, says, if my people pray, right? But when we start thinking along the lines of a deceased church or a church that's dying, prayer seems to go by the wayside. He said that in that heading that says when eyes open he says do you think that's how the new testament church prayed he was referring to um, a meaningful time of prayer well i've been to those places like in papua new guinea when they pray they pray very loud they all pray at one time they know that god has no problem deciphering who's saying what when and how and with what motivation of heart he says in that next prayer prayer and the health of the church went hand in hand and that was for the new testament church and that was probably for a time, even here at Lutheran Church of the Master, prayer, ministry, the health of the church, all went hand in hand, and people were together. Um, he talks about that New Testament example. He says, the apostles teaching the word of God, the fellowship and the breaking of bread, each other, and the prayers. And he says, the word meaning has much intensity and deliberation. It's like a wild and hungry beast ready to devour its prey. They were fervent. They were intense. They were passionate about prayer. Churches that are dying don't pray very much anymore. Not many people come out. There's not an urgency. There's not a need. If you say, hey, we're going to have a prayer meeting on Wednesday night, there'll be a few people who will come. And they'll maybe come for the first month. And then they start dwindling off. Look at uh, just in the last 10, 15 years that had the Smithton outpouring, the Toronto Airport Fellowship uh, outpouring, and then Lakeland down in Florida. We had these revivals across the land and something happened and they eventually just died out. Well, he says, but not the deceased churches. Uh, he's talking about, uh, he asked a few questions about the New Testament church and um, he said uh, something very telling. This gentleman said to him, there was a day when prayer was powerful in our church. People would pray before the worship service. Small groups spent a, a lot of time in prayer. We prayed intensely for our community. Then, he said, it stopped. It was like a light went on. Then, our community started changing. We were afraid, he says. Many members sold their homes and got out as quickly as they could. They started for focusing on the fear we stop serving the community. And it says we stop taking prayer seriously. I think it's a great conversation for us to have and say, Lord, would you teach us how to pray? Not nice Lutheran prayers. I'm talking about really crying out to God with an urgent spirit to say, would you please save our church? Would you talk about this prayer with each other right now?